This video will overview the procedure to test and replace a bathroom fan motor. I will unbox a new motor that I purchased online. I have another video where I show how to solve the common problem of separating the motor drive shaft from the fan. In this case, I am recycling the fan and I'm using a new motor. Kindly see the link above and below. The eight steps that I followed in this video are the following. First, I unboxed the new motor. I examined it to ensure the identical model number and the look and feel of the motor are identical to the original OEM motor. Next, I connected the new motor to the existing plate, which I've already cleaned for reuse. I needed to reuse the lock washers from the original motor, so I removed them and I reattached them to the new motor. I used a socket wrench to tighten the fan into place. Next, I connected the old fan, which I've previously cleaned, to the new motor. There is a side of the drive shaft on the new motor, which is keyed. I examined it carefully to find the key, then I aligned the plastic fan to that key, and I pushed the fan into place. Next, I tested the old and new motor with a multimeter. I dialed my multimeter to the ohms or continuity setting. The goal here is to test for resistance. I ensured both motors were disconnected from the power supply. I located the motor terminals, or in this case, the plug. I then touched each probe to one end of the plug terminal and I read the resistance. A reading of OL or open line means an infinite reading, which is indicative of an open circuit and means that the motor is faulty. A zero signifies a short circuit, which also means the motor is faulty. Finally, if the multimeter reading falls somewhere between zero and infinite, this means the fan motor is working properly. Ideally, one would have the technical specifications from the manufacturer, but this is not possible without a service manual, and good luck with that. Here, my old motor had a reading of OL, which confirmed that I had a faulty motor. My new motor had a reading, which confirmed that the new motor was good. The next step is to install the fan assembly into the ceiling. I had to remove two screws to have clearance for the plate. I took this opportunity to also check the exhaust flap was functioning normally. There are two notches on the back end of the plate, here and here. The assembly should be placed into those two notches first, and then the other end slid into place. Next, I put the screws back in place. Thank you. 
Finally, I plugged the fan into the power supply and I tested it briefly. It worked well. The next step is to check the condition of the fan vent outside and to clean it if blocked, which was the case here. This exhaust fan is rated for 110 cubic feet per minute displacement, or CFM, which is good. The exhaust fan vent flap opened nicely when the fan turned on. However, the fan vent is quite dirty, so I cleaned it. The next step is to install the fan cover. There are two clips. Hook the clips into the connectors on the plastic cover. Then, carefully slide them into the notches in the metal assembly we just installed into the ceiling. Finally, power on the fan and ensure it is working. That is it. The job is complete. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. In addition, if you found this video helpful, kindly like, share, hit the bell icon, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.